Um, I did want to chat with you a little bit about caffeine too, because I think that's something where mm. in the sport, whether you're doing the Golden Trail Series or you're doing the Ultra Trail Mont Blanc or Western States 100, caffeine is going to be something you see used by athletes and participants for, for the most part. I know there's some people that don't respond to caffeine, but that tends to be the minority. Uh, mm. And it is something where the research on caffeine is such that, you know, as far as legal things you can take in to supplement your performance, it's one of the higher rated ones you can find out there. So uh, what do we, what do we know about caffeine and endurance sport from just like a starting point for people who are thinking about, all right, I know I should probably consider this, but what do I really want to actually do maybe in training and then on race day to actually leverage that tool? Yeah, I mean, as you say, it, it doesn't help everyone. The metadata from scientific studies, um, the best col collated data is that 8% of people don't respond at all. You'll instinctively know that, I think, if, if you are one of those 50% of people respond, uh, super responders, and that 42% um, are respond above placebo. So um, when you look at the, the studies, and there's been been like over 100 studies on caffeine they the results actually average out those 100 percent of people and so actually the impact of caffeine on some individuals is far is, is, is massively understated but for other people massively overstated um the i guess the the stats on it are they it can improve endurance up to about six percent the way it does that is it releases fat cells from the liver that can be used as a fuel source, preserving glycogen from your muscles. So you're you're less likely to to run out of your glycogen stores, which is that's obviously great for endurance. It reduces the feeling of um, pain and fatigue. You will still actually be in pain and you will be fatiguing. You just won't feel it as much, which allows you to actually push through that pain and fatigue barrier a little bit more as well. Um, it, it also works in many other ways. We know about the alertness factor. Um, the the areas where I think people get right, get, go right and go wrong in, in its use, um, I think people use it too much as background noise, where the more caffeine you use, the less the impact it has. Although there is mixed research on that. So that's certainly true when it comes to alertness because how it works is caffeine attaches to sensors in your brain which blocks a chemical called adenosine then attaching to your brain when adenosine attaches to your brain it makes you feel sleepy and so it stops you feeling sleepy the more caffeine you have the more of those receptors you build and so it takes more and more caffeine to to keep yourself alert and to stop yourself being sleepy now, some studies I've seen to do with Ironman athletes has shown that even if you have uh, a high caffeine usage, you can still get a benefit of caffeine in sport. Because um, my understanding of it, although this hasn't been actually analysed, is that the the physiological elements of it, that releasing of the fat cells from the liver, still happen even if you use a, a lot of caffeine. But um, I personally always drink decaf coffee and don't have caffeine in my life at all so that when I take caffeine I don't have to have much to feel a real really big kick now the studies have shown that to to get your optimal caffeine dose is a huge amount of caffeine it's between three and six milligrams of caffeine most studies have shown for me it's about 5.5 milligrams um, but that equates to that's per kilo that you weigh um, so for someone like me that's 210 milligrams of caffeine that's three cans of red bull as <laughs> that low bar like it's a massive amount yeah and it doesn't make sense to use that in your training and doesn't really make sense to use it in, in many of your races it doesn't ultras I, I do that if i'm going for a pb and a 5k or 10k but actually studies are showing that one milligram of caffeine is what it takes to get an erg ergogenic effect so to have a, a benefit in sports so you're looking at for most people between 60 and 100 milligrams of caffeine so bear that in mind when you're looking at your gels your chews um your coffee your energy drinks whatever you're using is that a lot of gels are really underproofed and so 
particularly some gels like some of the goo gels and some of the cliff gels will have 20, 30, 40 milligrams of caffeine. So if you're looking for a, a quick kick, you're going to have to take two of the gels to be able to get that kick. Now, um, something else to bear in mind is that we, we massively differ in how fast caffeine is, it kicks and also how long it lasts. So the half-life of caffeine, which is how long it takes for half of it to leave your system. So if you start with like 100 milligrams in your system, the half-life is typically between kind of four and five hours for most people. So four or five hours later, you've got 50 milligrams left. That again, though, is that's data based off those different groups of individuals. You have 10% of people, well, 8% that don't respond at all. You have 50% super responders. And also it's muddled by other elements as well. And um, so if you smoke, for example, it doubles, sorry, it halves the, the half-life of caffeine. So actually the impact you have of caffeine is, is, is concentrated and reduced. Um, should have said also, it's, it peaks in your blood for around 45 minutes to an hour. So if you're doing sport, you'll typically get about 45 minutes worth of feeling like you're absolutely on fire. You've got a rocket up your butt. So knowing all of this and things like ultra running is quite important because you you want to time your peak for the time you think you need it, but also to extend it for as long as possible. And um, so I've found, and there, there are no studies on repeat doses of caffeine, which is, is frustrating because actually there isn't a a scientifically backed opinion of how you should approach it. But I've always found with athletes we've worked with and my own personal experience that you need to keep on increasing the dose of caffeine in your system to be able to actually extend the period of that peak. The peaks need to keep on getting higher. So when I was running a race like Comrades Ultramarathon 90K, um, I started with 50 milligram of caffeine. There's like half a caffeine bullet then my next dose I took when I was starting to feel a bit tired again, I had an, a one chew adding a hundred milligrams to suddenly the total of my systems more. I had my next chew within 45 minutes. So actually the total amount, even though it was the same level of dose, because I had one more chew, the, because it was a less than an hour, the total in my system was higher. And so you, you need to keep on increasing. So the longer the race, either the later you start your caffeine dose or the um, the more you have to just keep on increasing that dose level. One thing that hasn't been researched that I suspect could be possible is, is having a low dose of caffeine, kind of 30, 40 milligrams over an extended time, you may, able, you may still be able to see some of the fat mobilization without necessarily feeling that the the mental response that you see with the reduction of pain and fatigue um, and that alertness so that is something to worth playing with but because we are so different it's very hard to actually advise to someone what to do um and similarly if you're on if you're on the pill the contraceptive pill it actually doubles the lifespan or so the half-life of caffeine in your system so if you are someone on the pill, you probably won't want to take caffeine at night if you know it can take you it can keep you up because it's more likely to keep you up unless you're a fast metabolizer, at which point it might not have any effect whatsoever. But I generally say to people, um, think about who you are as an individual and whether you like to attack a race by having caffeine early so that you can then schedule it and know that you're going to be keeping your maintaining your pace or if you're someone who actually likes to respond and when you feel tired use it because if you're someone who wants to be responsive using something like a caffeine gel that takes longer to be absorbed in your system so anything you swallow typically takes around 25 minutes 15 to 25 minutes to start to kick and 45 55 minutes to peak if you have something that's sublingual, like a chew or a strip, they'll start to kick in five to 15 minutes and peak in 25 minutes. And so if you're during a race, you um, if you're trying to use caffeine responsibly when you're tired, it's better to use something like a chew or a strip. If you're actually 
planning on having regular caffeine, then you can use gels because the fact it takes longer to absorb won't be as, as much of an issue. Um, I guess those are the the main the, the main facts around it. Um, I'd, I'd say most people, though, because they use so much caffeine in their day to day life, when they then use it when they race, it, it has less of an impact. Um, and studies have shown that for caffeine to be completely out of your system takes around four days, but to reverse the effects of caffeine take at least two weeks for the um, to almost return to your baseline. If you're a very heavy caffeine user, though, you may get withdrawal symptoms. And so if you that that can give you headaches, it can actually disrupt your sleep. So if you do take a lot of caffeine day to day, I wouldn't necessarily advise cutting caffeine out in the build up to your races unless you do it quite long out because quite far out, because it, it the impact of disrupting your sleep may be more negative um, in your overall performance than the benefit of the caffeine on the day. Um, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it kind of fits within the mold of just like maybe address that in your off season if you're going to do that and make sure yeah. any of the hurdles that are come along with it are done when it's a low consequence for performance, um, which is interesting because it's like, uh, and this is, I mean, you hit on so many points that I, I'm, I'm curious mm -hmm. about and I think they do a pretty good job of just sort of spelling out maybe where some starting points are for people if they're doing longer races like I am where they're out there for 100 mm -hmm. miles or you know, all day long and, and beyond in some cases. So yeah, it, it's one of those spots where it's like, if you look at the caffeine research and find that, like what you mentioned, there's, I, I call it a performance dose of three to six mm. milligrams per kilogram. Mm. I think of that, like in a couple different ways. One is like, you can't be hitting dosages that large frequently enough to really like you, you can't be doing that often <laughs> if you're going to go that yeah. route. So then you yeah. have to decide like, when do I take that performance dose? So like if you're out there for 24 hours, like, you know, maybe you can do that a few times, but uh, you probably want to pick the right spots. My other mm -hmm. thought too, is like when we're looking at like a hundred mile race versus like say a 5k, if I'm doing a 5k, mm -hmm. I want that performance dose. Cause I sort of want to be shot out of a rocket. Whereas yeah. if I take a performance dose before a hundred miler, it's already too easy for me to get tempted to go a little faster than I should. So if I have an ergogenic yeah. aid incentivizing me to go faster yet, I'm just going to probably blow up at the end of the race due to two mm -hmm. fast miles early on that are like artificially effort wise, like reduced. Um, so, so many people have a morning coffee before their race and, and that's doing exactly that. You know, before your marathon, your half marathon, you do start off too quickly and, and then you're burning your glycogen stores up too at too high a rate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It, it just compounds itself. So I, I usually mm. tell folks it's like what, what's probably worth considering is like, if you're going to do performance dosing, think of it as like, where are the spots that I want to be returned to baseline because things are getting pretty rough or I know I'm going to be running through the night and I know two, 3 PM is going to be a challenge because normally I'd be fast asleep at that point. And now I'm out there not just being awake, but trying to perform at the same time versus mm -hmm. a strategy that it sounds like you're maybe a little more in favor of with these longer ones, which is just kind of like dosing in things that are like well below the performance dose, but doing them more frequently because you're likely to probably get enough of a cognitive assist there to stay mm -hmm on a relatively low intensity effort or enough focus to maintain that, but then you can pull that lever more frequently and then maybe avoid kind of shooting yourself mm -hmm. in the foot by going out too fast or, or hitting caffeine at a, at the wrong spot in the race at a high enough dose where you start, you know, eating up miles or kilometers at a rate that are unsustainable. But it's, it's, it's really worthwhile thinking about your overall new, nutrition when you think about caffeine as well because while that's the science behind it actually the reality is most people need and use caffeine at the point when their their stomach's going or they're not wanting to take more gels or they're mm -hmm. sick of their energy that their even their tailwind or whatever, whatever it is that they've had already three liters of it and so you need to think about um I always recommend having more than one potential source to test a caffeine because in the same way at ultras, you want to have 
a variety of, of flavors and of, of products to reach for because the moment you're having caffeine is when you're likely to be turned off all of these this nutrition you've been having up to that point in your race that's when you need to have some options and um but something else to bear in mind as well is that caffeine does spike your insulin levels in your bloodstream and so if you've been if, if you say for example take a caffeine gel to get the caffeine if you're not able to continue taking gels after that mm. you're not only going to get an insulin spike from the caffeine but you'll you'll get your sugar spike you'll get your insulin spike from the gel as well and so you'll then see a, a pronounced sugar crash afterwards if you don't keep topping up the carbohydrates so it's really important if in longer races if you are using caffeine that you don't just think carbohydrates will get me until like the 80 percent mark and now i just caffeine out the rest you, you need to be topping up to make sure you're not having that caffeine crash um, and that's where we we've kind of create we've, we've been toying with different products that can help so we've we've now got a ginger chew that is milder so it's like 33 milligrams of caffeine rather than 100 milligrams and, and that means you get the stomach settling element of, of ginger which moves carbohydrates faster through your system so at the point that your stomach's going to shit literally hopefully it means you still can get your caffeine without um, having to sacrifice your stomach quite as much but but, but do try it out because you know, I, I whenever I used to race when I was younger, I wouldn't mind going into that five milligram of caffeine because it meant that I'd go out all night and go raving afterwards because that seemed to be like a traditional post race finish. But that's not great after a training session <laughs> because right. you need to sleep. Um, but but also think about how to deploy it in your training as well. And I I I find that most people because they associate nutrition almost with the race itself because you don't use carbohydrates typically in your training because you don't need it you will do in your longer run potentially but then people neglect caffeine because they they link caffeine to caffeine gels or caffeine um, to energy tubes with caffeine in but actually for me i've found tempo runs it is so good to have caffeine on me because i'll quite often if i've had a really intense training block and it's it's the thursday run i fear the most which is my tempo run where you keep on extending it a mile and it, it almost seems unfeasibly hard when you're you're coming to the end of your training and um having a cafe having caffeine in your pocket you could even take it before if you wanted to but say i was get before comrades i did a basically 10 miles of hill sprints and knowing that halfway through even five miles of, of this hill i'd run up and down seemed a lot but knowing i could then have caffeine to help me get through the end meant that i could start with confidence at the beginning but actually i wasn't dreading the race i wasn't dreading dreading that training session all week and like it draining my mental energy because it, it suddenly meant halfway through the run, I'd be like, right, now's the time to blow the bloody doors off. And and so using it, having it there as a support, and sometimes I wouldn't take it in every session because sometimes it's important to actually gut it out and train your mind to having to deal with that misery. Um, but having something like that for your tempo run, maybe your interval session, if that's the one you fear, or having it in your back pocket on your long run where you're doing back to backs and you, you're just worried about not being able to finish those extra miles. Um, I, I just find it, it takes the stress out of training. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, those are some excellent points. I, I'm, I'm the same way. If I'm doing speed work, that's usually when I'll get a little more strategic about caffeine timing and things like that before, before some of those sessions. And, and it's also like, if we, if we go back over to like lower intensity, long run stuff, um, mm -hmm. you know, there's, there's debate about like how to structure long runs and ultra marathon running where it's like, do we do these ultra long, long runs? And I find that mm -hmm. like my personal opinion on that is like, it's probably not something you really need or want to be doing year round to the degree where your mm -hmm. weekends are dedicated to these like half day to full day training 
uh, training outings because you probably will still from tomorrow and have a real reduced quality in the mm -hmm. l later stages of that where now you're taking quality off. We're, we're kind of getting into the, the Killian experiment a little bit here, I guess. Uh, yeah. But there are those there are those like kind of consequential weeks when you're getting closer to the race itself, where with enough time, if you've developed the proper running fitness up to that point, you should have a little bit of flexibility to make that opportunity cost of maybe going out for a little bit of a longer session or doing a tune up race in order to practice things like, well, how do I feel when I'm out here at a low intensity for five hours? If I take in 50 mm -hmm. milligrams versus a hundred milligrams of caffeine and really kind of run some of these things through the system to, to give yourself mm -hmm. some insight as to how you're going to respond to it and put together a more of a personal, uh, individualized approach to kind of how you're going to use caffeine on race day. That's maybe a little more specific to the timing, the fatigue level and the specifics that are, are going to be there. Yeah, and, and even um, particularly if you're someone who trains the heart rates, just going out and practicing with caffeine as well because it's going to throw off all your stats because it's going to immediately jump. And yeah. so if you're, not, if you're not used to that on race day and you suddenly take some caffeine, you don't know what pace to run anymore because it, it's completely changed. Um, but I, I find as well, um, I, for me, caffeine is like a shortcut to motivation. and it's in the summer i don't need it for that but sometimes when it's dark and wet i can't be asked to train or, or to do a gym session that i just dread um it's take it's it's easier than having to motivate myself is just get some caffeine and that could be a cup of coffee or whatever it may be and then you know, that gives me the that boost to suddenly think yeah come on let's go and do the session so that's but that's that's where cutting out caffeine in your life is useful because it means you can take some and get that feeling of energy to motivate you without it necessarily you've taken so much during the day that it then impacts on your sleep mm -hmm. 